Providence Public School announced today their 2017 Teacher of the Year. So with more than 20 years experience teaching and coaching in Rhode Island education, Julie Mata is currently a sixth grade English as second language teacher at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. So congratulations to Miss Julie Mata. She's around the corner. I'd like to introduce her. Yes, give her a round of applause. Welcome her. Well, thank you. Good. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm sure it's been a whirlwind day it for has. you today. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for making time with us in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Um, so she walks in here. You walk in here today and mm -hmm. your phone starts ringing. You've been getting text messages. I have. Uh, so congratulations. We thank named you Teacher so of the much. Year. Tell us a little bit about your day, how it's gone down so far. It's been, like I said, a whirlwind. It's been very, very exciting. Um, it was very surprising to be brought in for what we thought was um, information about the uh, musical artist that's going to be working with our schools. And then all of a sudden it was, oh no, and we're also celebrating our, uh, the teacher of the year. So it was been exciting. My students were just beyond excited. Um, it was tough, honestly, to get them back on track to get some learning done this afternoon because we had not, we, after the auditorium, we had cake and cupcakes and it was a day full of hugs and excitement and it's just... Oh, that's, it's, that's amazing. <laughs> well, and congratulations and good for you for being such a good teacher that you're like, all right, people, back on track. Let's exactly. go. <laughs> yep. Let's get yep. back into this. Um, so tell me a little bit about, so you're sixth grade English second language teacher at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. How long have you been there? This is my first year at Gilbert Stewart. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, and so you've actually uh, worked in Providence Public Schools for a while. Now tell us just a little bit about background, some of the other schools that you've worked at as well. Background, I actually started my career um, in a small Catholic school, and I have to be honest, selfishly, wanted to get into public schools, so I went and got ESL certified. Oh, good for you. Um, and from the minute that I started teaching English learners, I, it just became my passion, and I was like, I did this selfishly, and it's just turned out to be the best thing. So um, I've taught at a bunch of different schools in Providence. Um, I was an administrator in the middle for a little bit. Um, in Pawtucket, I was the director of the ESL programs, and I was the assistant superintendent in East Providence. And the further up you go, like you feel you can impact kids more with leadership and things like that, but I felt so detached from my kids yeah. and just working day and night day and night day and night and then you don't really get to see the true fruits of your labor I just decided a few years ago I needed to go back to the classroom to be with my wow. kids and I've been happy as a clam wow wow good for you so working your way up through and into administration and actually mm -hmm. decided to step back into the classroom yeah wow not a lot of people do that <laughs> not do you know, I know many people in public education. Right. I can't say I know anyone that's made the transition back into the classroom. Mm -hmm. At least, unless they retired and then went back into right. the classroom, right. but not through. But anyway, um, so good for you. So that's very exciting. Tell us a little bit about, um, I, I do want to know, so you, it had to have been a big surprise for you, but it also couldn't have been a total 100% surprise because you did apply. To be right. teacher of the I year. was nominated and then I was honored to be nominated, so I went ahead and filled out the application, the application. and went through the process. Uh, and you had five of your students, they yep. co wrote a letter yep. uh, to the selection committee, and, and this is what so I have a quote from what they said Miss Mata is more than just a teacher for us, she is part of our lives. I'm going to cry reading this. I did. She, <laughs> she worries about us, but also looks for solutions to our problems. She makes us feel better about ourselves and helps us learn from our mistakes. What did that mean to you when you heard that or when you read that? Honestly, kind of took my breath away. Um, we, we have very honest conversations. I hold them to very high standards and have, have very high expectations of them. So they even joke that um, before lunch, sometimes I give like Mrs. Mata's daily speech about life. <laughs> um, so to, but you never really know you know what I mean? Like on a daily basis, I do get tons of hugs from my kids as they walk in and out the doors, especially my new arrival students. Um, they call me mom by mistake sometimes. So you feel that love, but you sometimes don't really know the impact that you're having. And when you hear those words, it just, it brings everything full circle. 
So talk to me a little bit about ESL teaching and the education impact over the past, you've been doing this for a while now, mm -hmm. talk about how ESL has changed over the past 20 years. The um, teaching aspect, then we'll get into the, the personal teaching aspect. aspect um, I don't know that it has completely changed other than the, I feel like the immigrant students that we used to get came with a little bit more, um, a little more skills, a little bit more well-developed literacy in their first language um, from the places that they came since the immigration trends, you know, changed from country to country. And I find now that a lot of, especially our new arrival students, um, they don't have well-developed literacy skills, so it's it's a it's double the work for them because many of them are learning to read and learning to write as they are learning another language as well. So I would say that's the biggest trend. Um, everybody thinks, oh, you're an ESL teacher, it's different, but really you're just using really good strategies that you would use with any child, but you do a lot more scaffolding. Um, and you got to make sure you take away the scaffolds, too, so that the kids do get more independent. That's true. Now, let's talk about that from a personal side, because you are really connected to these mm -hmm. children. Yeah. And when you are dealing with children who are learning English as a second language, uh, you're oftentimes, I would think, one of their only connections that they have. Uh, one of the first connections that they're making when they come to this community, right? And you Correct. said when the, they're first arriving. Yeah. Talk to me just a little bit about the relationships that you have with these children. I mean, obviously the, the essay that they co-wrote, I mean, it's so beautifully said. Uh, talk to me about the relationship you have with these children and, and helping them get to that next level of learning and get to that next level in their life. Well, it's uh, my class. I try to make my classroom a very inviting place. And I try to make it very comfortable, not to, not to the point where, um, you know, you're just going to come and hang out and lounge around or anything, but comfortable enough for them to take risks with language. Um, a lot of encouragement, a lot of positive reinforcements. I thank them a lot for the things. Um, I, I tell them they are going to teach me things as well. I, I always start off the school year telling the kids that they are smarter than I am because they do speak two languages. And I, yeah. I know a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but I'm not truly fluent in another, in another language. And I have um, a mirror in the back of my class with uh, the words I believe in with arrows. Oh, that's nice. So, at first, they don't kind of, they don't really they don't get, get it. it. <laughs> and then when they need it, I'll go, go look in that mirror, you know. So try to build that community, um, spend a lot of time on kindness, um, and just, I think they know it's a mutual respect. Like, there's a few of the younger teachers at my school last year and this year that say, like, how do you do it? Like, how do you manage them all? And I think it's, it really is all about relationships. When they know that you respect them and they respect you and you care about them, it, it makes them be able to flourish. What you just said there, do you think that's a point that we can all take in our daily lives? I, I think so. A mutual respect I that agree, we can really all take, do. no matter what our language is, uh, no matter what any anything is, just showing that mutual absolutely, respect. Absolutely, absolutely. I think what you said was, was beautifully spoken. Um, and do you think, sorry, my eye itches. <laughs> my apologies. I couldn't, <laughs> allergy season, I, I, I couldn't hold it in any longer. Um, and when you're going in, in this classroom, do you see any changes from, because you're in sixth grade, do you mm -hmm. see changes in the beginning of the year to the end of the year? Oh What's my that gosh. like? Oh, I, the first week of school, I took pictures of the kids and I have a map like with all the countries that they came from. And I'm like preparing an end of the year, like a poem for them. With, and I, I'm starting to take their, this, uh, end of school year fiction. Just their physical growth. They were like <laughs> such because I'm sixth grade. sixth grade. They were like little little babies when they got there, and now they're so mature. And I think they're more confident. Trans transitioning to middle school as well is a big adjustment, and moving from class to class, and having a locker, and them just really you can see the anxiety on their faces at the beginning of the year to just not only have like new teachers, but a whole new school, new surroundings, and not have a lot of language in many cases. So I've seen them physically mature and um, just smile and be happy. They like school. They love middle school. And you don't, sometimes you don't hear that from no, kids. That yeah. they, there's a few of my kids that get angry if we have a day off or, um, you know, it's a vacation. I told them I can't be in school Friday because my own daughter is graduating from college. Oh, congratulations. Like, Thank you. And um, they were like, oh. 
oh, we want you to, you know, not be here. So, do you often see with with ESL kids? Uh, do they get frustrated if they're having that communication barrier? Because so oftentimes, adults, we can get frustrated if we have a communication barrier. Or our kids, do you think they have more patience to work through it just because that's what they're used to in they, school? They do have a lot of patience and they help each other. Um, even the kids who don't see, speak the same language, like I have some Swahili speaking kids and some Spanish speaking kids and they try to get the words out for each other. Um, yeah, they're, they're okay with that. They get, um, a little bit more frustrated with higher like reading um like standardized tests they were exhausted oh. after the park um they were exhausted after the I ISS see. test do they do they offer the park in different languages the math is offered in spanish that's but it that's it yeah yeah and they don't and what? if the kids have not been here for a year in the country they don't have to take the english language arts okay. so they get a year reprieve from that they were exhausted you just pump them up you try to you know get them to do their best our local reading assessments like we have a big bullseye of where i want them to be by the end of the year so and even if they haven't gotten there they've seen that they've made growth toward that they've moved toward that target so so as you, as we're kind of winding down here on the mm -hmm. school year, what are you looking forward to as you as you wind down the school year? The kids go off, they're headed into the next year, the full year of middle school, um, and, and then you get a whole new group of kids. Well, we're except actually, get, yeah, that's if you don't, but you'll get more kids, right? Um, my kids that I have right now are working on argumentative writing, and they're like, we want you to teach us next year at seventh grade, so I said, well, you have to write an argu argumentative essays to Mr. Sutherland to tell him. Um, but I'll keep, I'll grow with them now for the whole three years. Okay, which oh, so you're love. like kind of team teaching? So, yeah, so, and we are, what I'm looking forward to is, we're kind of redesigning the ESL program at Gilbert Stewart oh, okay. for next year. We went, um, I was invited to a conference last December in Chicago, and my plan was to go and for us to make, create an, a model urban middle school ESL program. That was my proposal. So we did a lot of planning, and the pieces are coming together. And to me, that is so exciting to have the kids placed appropriately to have a little tiny bit of wiggle room in the schedule where if they are like moving along we can move them to a higher proficiency level group or get them out sooner into mainstream general ed science and social studies and math classes and things like that so so Gilbert Stewart is looking to implement what you've proposed yes so is this going yes. to be like a test model kind of for oh, that's what I mean I'd like it to be you know what I mean and then if we can be successful at it then of course share it and spread it You'll have to let us know how it goes. I will. We like I'll that idea. <laughs> that idea. I mean, and, that, and that's kind of my next question is for you then. How do you see uh, ESL moving forward into the future? You know, we've seen so many changes in public education with the implement of technology and different strategies and testing and all kinds of, all kinds of changes when it comes to public education. So with this concept, um, how do you see the, the progress moving forward? For L's in general? Or like for the education of them, I think that I'll let you decide how you. Want okay, to answer. how do I want to answer that? I think that not just in urban districts, but even in a smaller districts where the demographics are very different, all the immigration trends show that you're going to have an English learner in your classroom, whether you're an ESL teacher or not, in the next few years. So, I I think that everybody needs to prepare for that to be able to differentiate and personalize for those kids to make them successful. So I don't think ESL is just going to be like this urban thing anymore. I think it's spreading out into suburban places across Rhode Island. Um, Barrington has an influx of students, Newport, places that you don't expect there to be a lot of L, South Kingstown. They're growing their populations. And I think I, my my love would be like I love the fact that dual language programs are growing not only in our city but in other parts of the state. So, if we, if we could get more people to embrace that multi bilingualism, multilingualism, then ESL won't be seen as such a separate entity, so, but yes, rather separated. like a more inclusive yeah program inclusivity. Mm -hmm. I remember in school we didn't even see. ESL no. they had their own separate wing. Right. So right. bringing it more, I mean, that was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I was in school a long time ago. Me. But. Further than you. 
Um, well, great. Let us know how the program goes. I will. Continue I will. with that. Congratulations. Are you going to, so, so I think much. the big question is, are you going to celebrate or do you have to do more interviews? Like, how is how's I don't, your evening going to go? I think the end of my interviews. Okay. So you <laughs> can go today. home, answer all your texts, answer yes, all your phone that's calls. That's what I want to do. I want to, you know, message back people that have sent me um, greetings and congratulations and things like that. I do have school work to do. <laughs> you have to go home and finish your My work. principal sent me home with a whole bunch of schedules to go through to make sure the kids are scheduled properly for next year. I'm planning the honors assembly for our school. And um, if I could give a little shout out. Of course. <laughs> next Tuesday at Providence College on May 23rd from 5 to 7, it's been a dream of mine as the chair of the State ELL Advisory Council to have a statewide showcase of English learners, and that is coming to fruition. So one, uh, Tuesday night, we have over 150 students who will have their work displayed so that we can really show people who don't understand what being an English learner is like. Um, have their work. That's awesome. We're going to have an author's corner for some of the kids to read their work. They're going to, um, people are going to be able to autograph their program. So oh, my, my kids really will be there. They'll be in it. And there's other Providence teachers. Oh, and that's really neat. Teachers from all over the state have submitted work. So that's really neat. I'm so thrilled really and excited there. about that. So I'll be working on that. Yeah, there's no rest. I won't rest. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there's no time to celebrate Julie, tonight. Julie, <laughs> never. Maybe, maybe when summer comes. No. There's yeah, no such thing as summer little, for teachers. A little, a little Julie, I want summer. to get my picture with the Providence Public Schools Teacher of the Year 2017. I'm going to do one more because I think I blinked with my itchy eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Motts, thank you so much for being here. Thank she you. She is um, English Second Language Teacher at uh, Gilbert Stewart Middle School in Providence. Thank you so much for joining thank us. You Congratulations. Thank and you And all your continued hard work over the years and continuation with that. We're wrapping things up here on Go Local Live in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Um, CEO Josh Fenton will be here for Business Monday starting in just a few moments, so hang tight with us. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you soon. And we'll see you soon.